In this video, I'm going to be showing you some different strategies for adding cool physical textures to your design work. So the first one we have up is the transparent paper. I've used this in a bunch of different ways. It's hands down one of the most versatile ways to add some cool analog stuff to your work. I'm going to use it on this actually Lucifer's Pizza layout that I made in the past. So one really thing you can do with the transparent paper is when you have a design like this and you print it on an inkjet printer, you can create a lot of cool smudges and textures. So you can be doing this with color or black or whatever but all you're going to need is an inkjet printer and some transparent paper so once you have your file however you want it just go ahead and print it out so the ink stays wet on the transparent paper so i basically just go around with my fingerprint make some smudges and put some marks around the page it adds some nice texture and makes it feel a little more organic um shout out to obi and japari who actually showed me this strategy i really like how it looks and it's pretty versatile i even use it on the thumbnail for this video once I get it back into the computer, I basically just do a couple minor adjustments, mess with the curves and make it a little bit darker and more contrasty. And if you apply a gradient map or just a solid color overlay, you can pretty much change all this stuff and get some pretty cool outcomes. But for this one, I think I'm just going to keep it black. Here's the final design. Shout out Lucifer's Pizza. Another cool thing you can do with transparent paper is use one layer on top as the layer that has the black design or whatever type or whatever on top. And then the bottom layer, use something that uses more photo stuff like this terror design. So what I'm going to do actually is I have a layer like this, right? That just uses black and I'm going to print this on transparent paper using my laser printer. And then the bottom design like this, I'm going to print this on my normal inkjet printer. And then once we stack them on top of each other, create a cool overlaying like frosty effect. So once I print out both pages, I use the laser printer for the black and the inkjet printer for the colored area. I just roughly kind of line it up with my hands and you can see how the overlay looks. When you scan it in, just make sure it's pressed together good enough and doesn't shift around and it should be good to go. Once I get it back in the computer, you can actually use the camera raw filter in Photoshop and use the dehaze adjustment to see how frosty you want it to look and show more of the transparent layer or the colored layer. The next type of texture you can use that's very cost effective and easy. Uh, I mostly use this with my laser printer because it's cheaper and printing just black on a bunch of different colors. What you're going to do is you have your normal design like this. I'm using just black and white. And when we print this, we're going to print it on different colored construction paper, which allows you to get some nice textures and a lot of possibilities with the color. So I have this basic multicolored construction paper. This is the one by Crayola, super cheap, couple bucks online. Problem is it's nine by 12, so you gotta cut it to size for the printer. I use this cool little cutter thing that works super easy. If you don't have one of those though, you can just use a ruler and an X-Acto knife or worst case scenario, just some scissors. Just line it up with a normal piece of paper and cut it to size. So once I cut all of them, I load it up into the printer and I printed multiple versions of the poster. Uh, they're not supposed to get folded up like that, but oh well. Here's how they look. I really like how the texture from the background color shows through. I flattened them out, re-rolled them so they can get them nice and straight. And I like to give them just a nice like random crease. I don't really do it too specific. Just something that looks cool when you scan it back in. So here are the different colors scanned back in. I was checking them out. Uh, I prefer the yellow one. I usually like the lighter and brighter colors because the black looks cool on it. Just scaled it up back to size, gave it a little bit of a curves layer, and it was good to go. I originally did this design with just white, but I actually like how it looks with the yellow. All right, for this next one, I'm just going to be printing out this don't bite design on normal white paper and show you some tools I use for texturizing any type of design. All right, so the main few things I use are an X-Acto knife and nail file. Up first, I just use the old X-Acto knife that I don't really use for collage anymore. Give it some random scrapes. Then I hit it with the nail file. This is nice for adding some kind of abrasive texture and fading to your type or your imagery, whatever it is. 
I just kind of try to be loose with it and do it on random places. Don't get too specific or, you know, scientific with it. Just mess around. Uh, lastly, I use tape. Um, this is like packing tape because it's really uh, hard to pull off. So it actually takes away some of the ink and adds some, some rip feels. With that, I just go around on little corners and areas where type kind of joins in and maybe points of interest in the image. And it's pretty easy. You just tape it down and pull it off. So I really liked how this one turned out. Once I scanned it back in, I usually just adjust it a little bit, make the blacks darker, bring out the whites a little bit, and it should be good. Here's the final design. I actually like this one more than the original version, so definitely gonna keep it. So for this one, we're gonna just print the normal design on eight and a half by 11, colored on the inkjet, but we're gonna make it a lot smaller than the normal paper size. This saves not only ink, but gives it some cool effects when you scan it back in and enlarge it. Once I print it out, I just make sure it's flat enough to be scanned in. What's really cool about this is once you scale it back up to size, it adds some cool colored grain and kind of rough edges on the type. I really like how it turned out, added a little contrast to it, and it was good to go. So this next one, I'm gonna be using this burnout design I originally did and I printed it on that yellow construction paper we talked about earlier. But for, and now you can see I used some of the earlier techniques to texturize it as well. But for this one, I'm just gonna print it on white. I'm gonna show you some cool ways you can add this aged paper feel and just make your design feel nice and vintage. So to start this off, I'm just gonna crumble it up a little bit, give it that nice little distressing. What you're gonna to wanna to do first is set the oven to 200 and then make some coffee. Use whatever coffee you want. You don't gotta be this extra. Then I place it on a thin baking sheet like this and just soak the design in there for five to 10 minutes. Once you do that, if you wanna add some little extra grit and grain, add some of the coffee grounds on top of it and then give it another dunk. From there, just get any random towel and kind of pat it dry with your hands to squeeze out the excess coffee. Then we're gonna dump out the original coffee pan, place it on the oven, and bake it on this side for five minutes. Once that finishes up, just pull it out, flip it around and bake it for another three to five minutes. Just keep an eye on it because sometimes it can get overdone and you don't want to start a fire. Once it's done, pull it out, make sure it's all good. And now we have that nice distressed kind of burnt coffee look. I just wipe off the excess grounds, take a final look at it and scan it in. I really like how it turned out and it gives it that nice aged feel and it actually works with this design being burnt. Here's the final design pretty happy with it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two. If it helped you out, hit that like button and subscribe for more.